Hello everybody, welcome to the Champion Spotlight featuring Pantheon, presented by Riot Games. In this video, I'll demonstrate the items, runes, and masteries that I use, as well as some fun tricks that Pantheon can pull off. Let's start with your pre-game build. Pantheon is actually quite frail, and does not have strong escaping abilities. So, I plan my runes, masteries, and summoner spells around this fact. I take Cleanse and Ghost as my summoner spells, so that I can get in and out of battles fairly painlessly. I focus this build on doing as much damage with Heartseeker Strike as possible. Thus, I focus on physical damage and armor penetration, and max Heartseeker as soon as possible. I use armor penetration marks, dodge seals, magic resist per level glyphs, and health quintessences. This allows me to deal more damage with my abilities, while also being able to take a bit more punishment than my opponents expect. For masteries, I have 21 points in defense and 9 in offense. I take every damage reduction mastery I can in the defense tree, and then push down the offense tree with 1 point in armor penetration. With a mechie pendant and 2 health potions, I have a pretty strong lane, even against Tristana. I use spear shot to last hit minions for now. Even though she's trying her hardest to harass me, I'm able to get the first 4 minion kills with minimal damage taken. If your opponent is playing aggressively, it's best to try to sit right next to your ranged minions. If you get attacked, they'll switch focus onto the enemy champion. At level 3, I've learned all of my abilities, and I'm able to start harassing my opponent. As her minions start thinning out, I use Pantheon's standard 3-hit combo, Aegis of Zeonia, Heartseeker Strike, and Spear Shot. Because I haven't been casting anything but spear shot in lane, I have more than enough mana to run this combo twice. I harass her with spear shot until my leap comes back up again, and then force her to ghost and run away. I grab Chalice of Harmony and Mercury Treads with the interest of remaining durable. I cast my ultimate against Denivia, who isn't likely to move because she's defending her turret. My combo of spells not only gets an you very low, but also charges my passive shield twice, allowing me to tank the turret quite effectively. I disengage to let Singed finish her off. When I return to the lane, Evelyn initiates. I try to waste time and stun her as I wait for my team to show up. I whiff Heartseeker Strike due to Fling, but I'm still able to finish her off with a point blank spear shot and an automatic crit on my basic attack. I start buying damage items and get ganked as soon as I pull back from pushing a tower. The most crucial thing here is I actually save Cleanse for Nasus's Wither. Dark Binding naturally timed out by the time the other champions showed up, so cleansing it would have been fairly useless. I end up using Ghost as well as I start getting afraid of Evelyn. I stay by the tower to help defend it and just kill time for my team. As soon as Evelyn leaves her friends, I leap to stun Morgana and then hit both her and Nasus with Heartseeker Strike. Evelyn comes back in late, and you can see just why I love my defensive masteries and runes. After grabbing Brutalizer, I farm some minions and manage to tag Nasus with the Heartseeker Strike. As Evelyn shows up, I have to play this battle extremely smart. Once Nasus casts his ultimate, I stun him, then position myself so that I can hit both Evelyn and Nasus with Heartseeker. I play defensively as I wait for my cooldowns. Evelyn's stealth to initiate on me again. By maxing Heartseeker and grabbing Brutalizer, my spells cool quickly. Though I make a mistake in trying to cleanse the stun as opposed to the inevitable ignite, I do kill her and level up just in time to survive everything thanks to my defensive build pregame. Now I have Last Whisper and my team and I spot Morgana out of place. Realizing that my team will probably not be able to catch her, I use Ghost to get me into range for Aegis of Zeonia and an automatic critical strike for the kill. Yes, it's a kill steal, but my team should probably get on my level. Now I've gotten an Elixir of Fortitude. As we saw earlier with Anivia, Pantheon is an extremely potent tower diver. I barely catch up to Tristana and follow up with my standard Aegis Heartseeker combo. I do so much damage now that I can kill someone from over 700 health instantly. One of the best traits of Pantheon's leap is that I get an automatic shield to block one of those tower shots every time. I purchase Phage on my way to Frozen Mallet. 
As I'm about to fight Tristana in mid, Evelyn comes for me again. I cleanse at the wrong time again, but now my damage is so high that combining Aegis into Heartseeker gets her extremely low. The shield I get from my bash blocks one attack, and the spear shot I throw at the very end blocks another. She gets dropped by an automatic crit again, and I survive with 6 health. The defense talents were extremely useful, but the real hero here is the elixir of fortitude that I drank during the Tristana kill. This is the final, most intricate battle. If you're gonna take notes, do it here. I keep myself behind the tank, and when Evelyn wakes up on Singed, I blow her up with Aegis Heartseeker, also damaging Morgana severely. However, I can't chase down Morgana just yet, as my important spells are on cooldown now. I see an opening on Nasus and dive right into crit and the death as well. Now their team doesn't have enough damage to actually kill me, so I'm free to dive on Anivia. I could have ghosted after her once she flashed, but they surrender anyway. Thanks for tuning in to the Pantheon Spotlight. I'll see you next time.